Come on, everybody. Put your hands together for Carl Allen. What's up? Hey, guys, I got some props today. We're going to be doing some audience participation at the end. So uh, I'm going to need four volunteers uh, for the last five minutes. But um, oh, people put their hands up. We'll, uh, we'll get to you guys in a minute. So uh, it's an absolute honor and privilege to be here today talking to you guys. So I'm Carl Allen. I'm the founder and CEO of Dealmaker Wealth Society. I'm a private equity investor. I own a big private equity company. And I coach thousands and thousands of people all over the world in the art and science of buying businesses. And I'm going to be talking today about what I call hands-off business acquisitions as an ultimate wealth creation tool. I'm going to teach you in 30 minutes how to buy a business using other people's money and how to buy a business that you don't have to operate. Because buying and owning companies is really cool. Operating businesses is really boring, right? I own 26 companies. I don't work in any of them. You can have other people run those businesses. For those of you who don't know me, I'm not a fly-by-night guy. There's a lot of business acquisition coaches out there now. Somebody goes and buys a laundromat or a comic book store, and they think they can teach this stuff. I've been doing this for over three decades. I spent 15 years as a Wall Street investment banker, and then I've spent the last 16 years as a Main Street deal maker, buying, selling businesses. I've done over 400 transactions, and I've coached over 7,500 people. And I'm actually in the midst of two roll-ups at the moment. A roll-up is where you pick a niche, you buy lots of different businesses within that sector, and you combine them all together. Both of those will IPO within the next couple of years for about a billion dollars a piece. And I'm also a real estate guy. I've been buying real estate like crazy with my business partners over the past year or so, and my goal is to have acquired 500 houses within the next five years. So I want to start with a philosophical question, right? Why should you buy a business? Because most people don't buy businesses. Most people actually start businesses. If you look at the market stats from the Small Business Administration, in 2022, 6.6 .6 million Americans started a business, right? And only 206,000 people went out and actually bought the business. So it's really strange. Most things in life, we don't build things, we buy them, right? We buy houses, cars, iPhones. We don't build them. But in businesses, it's crazy. People get these entrepreneurial itches. They oh, I've got to be an entrepreneur. I've got to create the next Google or Facebook. And it's one of the most dangerous things you could ever do in life. So hands up if you own a car. Right, most people own a car, right? So you can build a car. Of course you can. You can go to eBay. You can buy all the components, the glass, the engine, the battery, all those things. And then you can go on YouTube and figure out, how do I piece it all together and make it work? People don't do that, right? They go and they buy a car that someone's built. You can rock up to Tesla or BMW or wherever and buy a car that they built for you, and you can finance it using their money, right? You can finance that acquisition using other people's money. So we do that when we buy a car, but why don't we do that when we want to own a business? Well, you can, right? That's why I'm going to teach you. Hands up, you've got an iPhone or a smartphone. Everybody's got a mobile device. Did you go to Radio Shack? Do you still have Radio Shack? I know in the 80s, when I first came to the States, um, there was Radio Shack. But you can build an iPhone. You can go to Radio Shack. You can buy all the components and get the table and the soldering iron and the big like glass eye. And you, you can build an iPhone. Or do you go to Verizon or Apple and buy an iPhone that they've built for you and use somebody else's money to pay for it? You can pay for an iPhone on a monthly contract, right? So we can do it with an iPhone. Why don't we do that with businesses? Well, well we can. What about houses? Who owns a house? OK, great. 97% of people that own houses bought them. Somebody built the house, and then they bought it from them. And you used other people's money, banks, mortgage companies, to fund the majority of that deal. But 3% of people actually build houses, right? You can build a house if, if you want to. So if we buy iPhones, we buy cars, we buy houses, why don't we buy businesses? Why do we build businesses? 
It's the most dangerous thing, it's the riskiest thing you can do, right? If you look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they'll give you stats of business failure rates. Or if you go and read the book, The E-Myth, anyone read The E-Myth by Michael Gerber? Probably one of the greatest business books ever written. Michael Gerber talks in The E-Myth that 40% of startups, those 6.6 .6 million people that have an entrepreneurial seizure, leave a W-2 and start a company, 40% of those people have failed within the first one year. And 96% of those people will fail within the first 10 years. So why not just go and buy a business that's 10 years old? And you're stacking the odds in your favor. And I got to tell you, there's so many businesses available for sale, primarily driven by, by baby boomers. So if we look at the four major countries where I'm doing deals and I'm coaching students, there's over 39 million businesses available, about 30.2 million in the United States. 2.25 million of those companies are for sale right now, today. They're for sale. They're either listed for sale or they're off-market deals. But only one in 11 of those businesses are actually going to sell. Because I showed you before, there's only 206,000 businesses that changed ownership within the last 12 months. So 10 out of 11 businesses that try and sell don't because most people don't know how to buy a business. They don't know how to find deals. They don't know how to negotiate with sellers. And if the deal needs some capital, they don't know how to raise it. There's been a lot of talk the last few days about raising capital for real estate. It's just as easy to raise capital to buy a business as it is to do real estate acquisitions. And one of the things that makes me really sad <coughs> is 62% of baby boomers that are retiring and want to go on to a new season in their life, they have to just close the doors and turn off the lights. 62% of retiring business owners can't find a buyer. So all that work they've done in their business, the legacy that they've built, the employees that they've nurtured, the customers that they've served, they've got to let all that go. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. So one of my big missions is to connect all those crazy kid entrepreneurs that want to start businesses, say, no, don't do that because it's dumb, Go and buy one of these incredible businesses that nobody else wants to buy and, and buy it creatively using other people's money.